Hello and a very welcome. This is the news on Enter International. My name is Justin Bemunyan. Here are the top stories. There is a room for every visitor. Keep your environment clean. Sleep inside the long-lasting insecticide nets. Go for a test when feeling feverish. World Malaria Day. Stakeholders brace up to challenges of increasing cases in the face of COVID-19 pandemic. This is critical in view of the fact that uh, we need to protect our healthcare workers because they need to be alive and well to be able to take care of the COVID-19 patients uh, in this country. More palliatives for COVID-19 as First Lady donates to states of the Federation. And as Nigeria records more COVID-19 cases, World Health Organization says recovered COVID-19 patients are not free from infection. Well, thank you very much for joining us. The World Health Organization says no evidence that recovered patients from COVID-19 are protected from a second infection. As Nigeria records COVID-19 cases in 27 states and the federal capital territory. Now let's join Adebola Brooklyn Sunday for details. Nigeria Center for Disease Control NCDC at 11 p.m. local time, April 24th, 2020, said there are 1,095 confirmed cases of COVID-19 in Nigeria, with Lagos topping the charts with 657 cases, followed by the Federal Capital Territory with 138, Kano 73, Ogun 35, and Gombe 30 cases. Below the ladder are Benue, Anambra, Adamawa, and Plateau states, all having a case each. In Africa, the International Monetary Fund has announced the payment of emergency aid of 309 million U.S. dollars to Mozambique to help it fight the coronavirus pandemic. IMF said the pandemic have had a significant impact on the economy of Mozambique, halting an emergency recovery after two powerful tropical cyclones that struck in 2019. South Africa's Trade Minister Ibrahim Patel says the country has concluded plans to reopen its agriculture sector and allow some manufacturing and retail to resume as the country balances the need to restart economic output and curb the spread of the new coronavirus. South Africa has spent a month under restrictions, leaving many businesses and individuals struggling without income in the recession hits economy. In the Middle East, Iran's health ministry spokesman Kianosh Jean-Paul said the death toll from coronavirus has risen by 76 to reach a total of 5,650. The number of people diagnosed with the disease is now 89,328, of which 66,599 have recovered. Records from World Ometer at about 6.30 p.m. Nigerian time show that 2,761,967 persons have been infected globally by coronavirus. From this number, 193,217 have died, while 763,017 recoveries have been made worldwide. The World Health Organization, WHO, said currently there is no evidence that people who have recovered from COVID-19 and have antibodies are protected from a second coronavirus infection. The UN agency warned especially Chile against issuing immunity passports or risk-free certificates to people who have been infected, saying the practice may actually increase the risk of spread as they may ignore standard advice. I am Adebola, Brooklyn Sunday.
In the meantime, Lagos State Governor Babajide Sawolu has urged Muslim faithful to be observant of all COVID-19 preventive measures put in place by government as they observe Ramadan. The governor also gave residents a waiting burial of their loved ones two weeks to do so as long as they adhere strictly to social distancing measures to enable government to congest the mortuaries. In the meantime, the governor has announced the release of 209 inmates in order to prevent the spread of COVID-19 in overcrowded correctional facilities. And still talking health, uh, 20... 19 World Malaria Report shows a progress in the prevention and control of malaria, especially in pregnant women and children. Now, this effort has been hampered in 2020 by the global response to the coronavirus pandemic. Uche Ogochuku in this report examines actions on malaria in the context of COVID-19. Countries across the globe are contending with COVID-19, although cases of the pandemic in malaria-prone Africa are currently on the low elbe. Nigeria, for instance, recalls nine deaths per hour daily from malaria, but has recorded only 32 deaths from coronavirus since the index case in February. Yet, attention is more on coronavirus. The World Health Organization and other health experts worry that the successes recorded in the prevention and control of malaria in sub-Sahara Africa where the disease is endemic could suffer an equivalent of 20 years setback as countries focus most of their energy and resources on containing the coronavirus pandemic. As the world grapples with COVID-19, this is an opportunity to highlight the importance of maintaining robust health systems and continuing delivery of essential health services. Agencies in charge of malaria control in Nigeria are conscious of this fact. So working with our partners to ensure that commodities for treating malaria are available, the rapid diagnostic test kits, the ACTs for treatment, and then the injection and test unit for severe malaria treatment. We are making a significant effort to improve malaria data quality and availability. In 2019, the malaria program conducted a rapid impact assessment to provide information on the incidence of malaria in different zones of the country. There is a role for every citizen. Keep your environment clean, sleep inside the long-lasting insecticidal nets, go for a test when feeling feverish, Health workers are, however, advised not to see every patient with fever as a COVID-19 case. The theme of 2020 World Malaria Day, Zero Malaria Starts With Me, Six to encourage everyone from policymakers, private sector to affected communities to take up the challenge of malaria seriously. Uche Ugochukun, NTA News. Now, joining us to discuss the Malaria Day is Dr. Linda Ozo. She is the Malaria Program Manager, WHO Nigeria Country Office. Dr. Linda Ozo, thank you very much for joining us on NTR International. Thank you very much. Good evening, Nigerians, and thanks for having me. Oh, you're welcome. Now, in view of the 2020 World Malaria Day, what is your assessment of the fight against malaria in Nigeria? I would say that the fight against malaria has been on a good trajectory. Progress has been made, giant strides have been recorded. However, we need to be mindful, especially as we grapple with the COVID-19 outbreak, that these successes, these gains are quite fragile and could be reversed if we dare step down or, uh, or scale down on intervention uh, you know, uh, support. Um, we know that Nigeria has recorded uh, progress in malaria control from 42% uh, prevalence in 2010 to 23% prevalence in 2018. We, we think this is quite commendable and if we continue on the same trajectory we will be able to achieve a lot in the malaria control space in Nigeria. Now, looking at malaria in the context of COVID-19, what would be your advice to Nigeria as it struggles with 
containing the pandemic that is talking about the COVID-19? First, I would applaud the Nigerian government on efforts so far in containing the COVID-19. However, to state that this is not the time to scale back on malaria control activities or interventions. This is more so as we move into the high, the rainy season, the peak transmission seasons. If we dare, if we try to scale down or do not give sufficient attention to malaria control, we stand the risk of seeing um, a lot of cases, uh, you know, cases rising and deaths. And so my advice to the Nigerian government is that we should maintain, however possible, maintain the scale and scope of interventions of malaria, ensure that every citizen, everyone has access to LLINs, access to diagnosis and treatment. And this means that all the campaigns that have been planned for the year uh, has to go on to make sure that every individual, everyone in the states get their LLINs distributed. The states where they have planned for the uh, seasonal malaria chemo prevention should be maintained. And so I think Nigerian gov I, 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 I would advise the Nigerian government not to scale back on any malaria intervention, but rather sustain and maintain progress that we're seeing by continuing intervention coverage. Now, from the records, there is a milestone recorded in malaria control. Now, what should countries do to avoid setting back this milestone recorded uh, in malaria control because of the total attention directed at COVID-19? Yeah, you're right about uh, the total attention to COVID-19, and that's why I earlier mentioned that we should not scale back on any interventions. Malaria control uh, intervention should be maintained. The populace, the individuals, the communities must be supported by government, all stakeholders, to, uh, to, to gain access and retain access to uh, life-saving tools, uh, malaria, malaria, anti-malaria tools, including LLINs for prevention, access to malaria diagnosis and treatment. This is even more important in the face of COVID because we know that COVID, they have similar symptoms uh, like fever. And so every, this is the time to ensure that every fever case gets tested for malaria to rule out that the fever is not malaria and uh, it could be COVID. And when it's even when it's COVID, the person could also have malaria. So it's very key that we look for a way to integrate the malaria. My expectation is that the malaria program will be working very closely with the National uh, Nigerian Center for Disease Control to make sure that we integrate malaria uh, interventions very closely with the COVID response so that we do not suffer a setback in malaria control. Now, briefly before I let you go, what is the relationship between malaria chloroquine and COVID-19 against the uh, background of uh, public perception that chloroquine helps in treating COVID-19? <laughs> well, um, uh, chloroquine for chloroquine is used for treating malaria in certain climes, but in Nigeria, chloroquine has not been recommended for malaria treatment and therefore we do not expect that in the face of COVID that chloroquine will be used for malaria management. In 2010, the, Honourable, the then Honorable Minister issued a memo on the restriction of use of chloroquine for treatment of malaria. And so the chloroquines have been taken off the shelves and we do not encourage anyone to use chloroquine because there are no more chloroquines are not effective against the malaria we have in Nigeria, the P. falciparum malaria. And so for Nigerians, we would still encourage and recommend that if you ever get a fever, get tested and if it is positive, make sure you get artemisinin combination therapy for treatment of malaria. In terms of uh, using chloroquine for management of COVID, uh, I'm aware that research is still ongoing and WHO is yet to issue any final statement on the use of chloroquine. So I wouldn't say chloroquine has been confirmed as a use for management of COVID-19. Well, Dr. Linda Ozo, thank you very much for your time with us on Enter International. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you very much. Well, that was uh, Dr. Linda Ozo, the Malaria Program Manager, WHO Nigeria Country Office, uh, speaking on the 2020 uh, malaria day and now moving on the abuja electricity distribution company aedc has donated palliatives to the federal capital territory tax force on covid 19 as its corporate social responsibility and neil giddy reports a big storm 
sweeping through the world. That is coronavirus. And it's time to test the strength of the milk of human kindness. And Abuja Electricity Distribution Company, AEDC, has written itself in the positive side of the Nigerian history at this trying time. Food items in millions coming from the AEDC management to assist those infected and affected by the COVID-19 in the Federal Capital Territory, as well as connecting isolation centers in the Federal Capital Territory to the national grid. The cost of connecting the isolation centers alone is about 55 million. The cost of foodstuffs is about 3 million per state. So when you multiply three times four, uh, these provisions are worth 12 million. And they're going around similar quantities, FCT, Niger, Kogi, and Nasarawa. And above that, I want to assure our customers that uh, our team is working diligently to minimize faults or respond quickly to faults when they occur. And also to take advantage for any generation, excess generation which is being made to convey to our customers. Some of our customers may attest that they have seen improved level of supply. Having said that, we still have pockets of challenges and we are working very hard to make sure that the entire catchment area where we service can, can have a better experience during this difficult time. To this we say thank you. So many foodstuffs that we had already accounted for here and we assured them also of our support. This donation is not limited only to the Federal Capital Territory, but also its catchment areas in Niger, Nasarawa, and Kogi states. The disruptions and devastations caused by COVID-19 are laudable enough for the deaf and visible for the blind. So, AEDC advises the faithful compliance with the preventive measures outlined by health professionals. Mie Ogidi, NT News. Well, this is the news on Enter International reaching you live from Abuja. Stay tuned for more stories after the break. Now, believe this corotin. You know, if you touch black man, if you like, gather the whole Niger, come together, make a cough. <laughs> Nothing. Which one you want? Give me VD. Uh -huh. I beg, get small pieces. How much you want to give her? Give me 200. <coughs> Take your change now, will you? You know what your change is? My people, this coronavirus. Now, serious matter, me will now wash your hands regularly. Come use alcohol based hand sanitizer. If you know, see water, wash your hand, oh, make you sit down for house. You see this virus, so, oh? it no get leg. Now, we the waka kuru kere. No walk around, make the virus for die. No forget, say, the betterment of our people. Now for your handy day. This message is from the Akin Fadeli Foundation in partnership with the National Orientation Agency with support from MacArthur Foundation. You're welcome back. Now, as part of measures to cushion the hardship occasioned by the novel coronavirus pandemic on the masses, especially the vulnerable, Ondo State Government has taken delivery of palliative materials, which include bags of rice and kegs of vegetable oil from the federal government. Abiola Ario reports that the materials will be distributed to the vulnerable in the 18 local government areas of the state. The palliative materials include 1,850 kg bags of rice and 700 kegs of vegetable oil presented to Ondo State through the Federal Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development. We all realized the fact that more than ever before we now have many people that are vulnerable, even if they, are not, they may not be that poor. So many people actually desire government attention because of the situation we have found ourselves now. Governor Olwaro Timiakredolu received the materials and handed them over to the Ondo State COVID-19 Palliatives Committee, appreciated the federal government's gesture, assuring that the food items would be distributed evenly to the people of the state. We have covered all the local government in the first round, but the second round is going to start very soon. We'll do second round, and if you have still have more uh, palliative to give, we'll also do 
other rounds. So it's not something that is ended. The state government says arrangement is on ground to distribute the items to the targeted groups across the 18 local government areas of the state in Akure, Abiola, Rio, NCA News. Now, as the person-to-person -person and community transmission of COVID-19 continues to increase the number of confirmed cases in Nigeria, the place of enlightenment on the need for people to adhere to advisories on how to curb the spread of the pandemic cannot be overemphasized. This informed the advocacy of African scholars care initiative in uh, Kadokuchi area of the federal capital territory and uh, Debola Bruslin Sunday has the details. Some of the preventive measures are regular washing of hands with soap and water, social distancing and respiratory hygiene. <laughs> One after another, temperature of the people were tested and they were given face masks after advising them in line with the voluntary universal mask usage. High temperature is one of the symptoms for the global pandemic at the moment. So first of all, we check the temperature of the person, educate them on how to use a mask. One person, one mask. Taking into cognizance the social distancing policy, palace of the district head of the community was used for palliative distribution towards cushioning the effects of the lockdown on the people. We are grateful to these people who have come to our aid. Most of our people are artisans. I also want the FCDA to come and support. If everybody can divide the, the two square meters they have to every person, it's going to, the world is going to be a better place. It's coming from it's actually a personal project. Very happy. I think I've impacted in some people's life. Like a little, the little I can. Kadukuchi is one of the communities in the Jahi district of the Federal Capital Territory. Adebola, Brooklyn Sunday, NTA News. The need to prevent the spread of COVID-19 necessitated the lockdown by the federal government. However, artisans are doing little to stop its spread, most especially as regards maintaining social distancing. Haman Jabani goes into the world of artisans under the lockdown. It is obvious that most artisans I came across are not adhering to the lockdown, working to provide for basic food, sanitary needs, any health care or shelter costs that could be incurred. However, the basic precautionary measures must be followed to curb the spread of COVID-19. The likes of Faith, Hassan and Mary, who are artisans, share their ways of preventing themselves from the virus and not to spread it in case they have it. We attend to any customer, we use our sanitizer. Our face mask is always there until we close. And they, as you can see, we are behind the counter. As a sterilizer. To sterilize our clippers. As our customers are coming in, we put um, sanitizers on their hand. And I'm not, I'm not too close to her. I'm in her back. What can you say about the local barbers, nail cutters, the market people, and a host of others striving to make meat on a daily basis? The story is encouraging at Sabon Lugbe where community members are taking preventive measures themselves. I told the owner of the shop to please, if the people inside are not barbing, that they can come outside and I don't want crowd. I have taken the precautionary measures I have to. I have my sanitizer and my face mask in my bag. So I feel I'm, I'm good to go. Dr. Iyang Iyang, a medical practitioner who believes that most of the cases being recorded in the country are as a result of non-adherence to physical distancing measures, adding that much need to be done to upscale a light main campaign. You could still use your hand sanitizers where, running water, where soap and running water is not available. So it's a standard way. There is no going back to that. Stay safe and healthy until COVID-19 is over. Hamman Jabani, NTA News. Now let's join Elias Wali Yakubu for the Weekend Review. Glad to have you join me on this week's edition of Week in Review, a program that brings highlights of major events within the week under review. 
Let's begin with the honor done to President Muhammadu Buhari at the ECOWAS extraordinary session where he was unanimously appointed to champion the COVID-19 fight in the West African region and call on fellow ECOWAS leaders to look beyond the challenges posed by COVID-19 and tap into various opportunities it presents for the betterment of lives in member countries. President Buhari calls for more collaboration to save the region from the deadly pandemic through peer review and best practices. Meanwhile, the Presidential Task Force on COVID-19 applauds the appointment of President Muhammadu Buhari as champion of the COVID-19 fight in the West African region. Chairman of the Task Force, Boss Mustafa, says it must now factor the sub-region into its plans and activities to support the President in his new role. In the meantime, following the sighting of the Ramadan crescent, President Muhammadu Buhari sent his best wishes to Muslims in the country and all over the world as they begin this year's month long fast. A statement from the senior special assistant to the president of media and publicity Garba Shehu quoted the president congratulating all Muslims as they commence this year's Ramadan fast, which is, is characterized by self-denial, universal brotherhood, austerity, and helping relatives and needy people, said the president. President Buhari described Ramadan 2020 as a challenge as it is coming at a period of the global pandemic which has spread to virtually all countries. He advised citizens to avoid large gatherings and have their prayers and feast individually or with families at home. That's it on this segment. My name is Ilyasu Ali Yakubu. The news continues. The Nigerian police force has dismissed Inspector Equeson Taiwo and Constable Abbas Ibrahim from the force. The police says the dismissal of the officers was preceded by a trial where they were found guilty of assaulting a woman. The personnel attached to Iwo Division of Oshun State Police Command were seen assaulting the woman at the Odo Ori Market, Iwo Oshun State, in a video in early April. In the video, the police officers interrogated the woman on an unknown issue, pulled her by her clothes and flogged her with cane amidst pleas by sympathizers to stop the assault. And President Muhammad Buhari has said the death of Sarkin Malaman Sokoto Al Haji Buhari Siridawa is not only a loss to the people of Sokoto State but the entire country because of his indefatigable commitment to peace during his eventful life on earth. The president, who received the news of uh, Siridawa's demise with great shock, said the late Sarkin Malaman. Sakwato was one of the greatest religious leaders in recent history and time. According to President Buhari, the late Siridi Dawa who had committed himself to the promotion of peace, unity, tolerance and peaceful coexistence in the country. Describing him as a remarkable leader, the president added that the late Sarkin Malaman Sakwato had built an enviable legacy. President Buhari, while extending his condolences to the Sokoto Emirate Council in particular and the government and people of Sokoto State in general, urged the bereaved family to bear the loss with fortitude. Now, coming up shortly, shortly on NT International is a BBC documentary on drug abuse. Please stay tuned. And this is where the news on NT International ends. Thank you very much for being a part of it. My name is Justin Bemungi.